Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the bitch you channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch stores on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. Well, it's the end of another week of congressional impeachment hearings. As a commentator, I was forced to watch the entire mind-numbingly boring exercise in complete futility. Now, to be clear, there are exactly three facts that came out of this week's hearing. Number one, President Trump outright stated to the U.S. Ambassador to the European Union, Gordon Sondland, quote, I want nothing. I want no quid pro quo. I want Zelensky to do the right thing. End quote. Two, we found out that Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindeman, a Ukrainian-American who served se uh, several diplomatic roles with respect to Ukraine, was offered the position of Ukrainian defense minister on three occasions, each of which he turned down. And number three, and probably most importantly, we learned that you should always take notes. Taking notes turns out to be fantastically important if you're a government flunky. Take notes. Take notes about where you went for lunch and what seat you were in, um, what were the surroundings, the meal, whether you liked it or not, if you finished it, if the waiter was good, etc. Jot down a map of the interior of the restaurant with respect to the exterior. When you go to the bathroom, take notes about when you took a dump, in which bathroom, and in which stall, in which building, what was written on the walls in the stall, what the paint scheme was in the stall, the make and model of the toilet paper, the make and model of the toilet, the size of the turd down to the micrometer level, how many um, sections of toilet paper you used, the toilet paper ply and consistency, how many flushes it took down to the teaspoon, and the exact length of time it took to perform each operation. For that matter, take notes on your dreams as they will provide an insight into your mental positioning. Without these notes, you might wind up in front of a congressional hearing where each side can lambast you, which is exactly what happened to Ambassador Sondland. He foolishly thought that he'd have access to State Department records, and without his own notes, he was lost and became cannon fodder for both the Republicans and the Democrats. I was really actually rather amazed that he didn't take notes. I learned very early on in my 40-year IT career to at least send confirmation emails to people that I had meetings with. I could um, also send them to myself if I couldn't send them to someone else, but I would always BCC them to my own private email address so that I had a date stamp on it. There are always people who will try to screw you. Always, always, always cover your ass. And for federal employees, that means taking notes about anything and everything. All the rest of this week's testimony, the entire mind-numbing 10, 20 or so hours of it can be classified as either hearsay or telepathy. The hearsay was easy to pick out. It happened at any time any witness said that someone else told them something and that they made a conclusion based on what that someone else said. The moment that you hear the words, someone else told me, or I heard that, well, immediately just ignore the next thing that happens to come out of that witness's mouth because they don't actually know anything at all. In a court of law, an attorney would say, Objection, Your Honor, hearsay, and the judge would throw out the testimony. The rest involved telepathy, something that none of the witnesses appear to have possessed. 
Truthfully, I don't think anyone possesses telepathy because it would be such a useful survival skill that after only a few generations, all human beings would possess it. I mean, consider, if you had telepathy, you would know in advance where and when your prey was going to be when you were hunting it. You and your offspring would be fat and happy while the rest of your tribe just starved. If you had telepathy, you would win every single war. You would know everything about your enemy, from what the generals were planning down to the precise location of every soldier, artillery, tank, navy ship, and aircraft. If there was a human being involved, telepathy would allow you to know about it. If telepathy were possible, Hitler would have won World War II. Now, much as people want to believe, telepathy in human beings is complete fantasy. Yet, almost all of the testimony this week relied on witnesses' knowledge of the president's intent or state of mind. This would require telepathy, since none of those witnesses has the slightest idea of what was in the president's mind nor his intent. Now, as a lifelong Star Trek fan, I couldn't help but think about the barrier at the edge of the galaxy, which is what you see behind me. In the context of Star Trek, the barrier is an enormous, cloud-like structure that encases our galaxy. It was apparently erected untold eons ago by an incredibly advanced race for unknown purposes. However, when a human being with a high telepathic potential passes through the barrier, they gain near-godlike powers, and one of these is to easily read the minds of anyone uh, apparently across vast distances. Now, did this week's uh, witnesses pass through the barrier? And if so, how do they get there? And can I have a chance at it? Because I could really use near godlike powers. If the witnesses didn't pass through the barrier, did they gain telepathic powers via other means? And if so, how was it accomplished? And how do I have a chance at it? I could really do with that kind of telepathy. <laughs> Sadly, I don't think the witnesses passed through the barrier nor attained telepathy via other means. I think they're just normal human beings making inaccurate assumptions about and coming to conclusions erroneously based on hearsay. In a court of law, an attorney would just say, Objection, Your Honor, calls for conclusion by the witness, and the judge would throw out the testimony. However, this isn't a court of law, but rather political theater, and it really is theater. As my longtime viewers know, a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, I was once an actor, and this has left me with it permanently an eye towards what looked like theatrics. While it does occasionally kind of spoil films and uh, some plays because I can't turn this off, it also pinpoints things like the theatrical nature of these hearings. Now, I'd like to explain this using a Mark Zuckerberg Senate hearing testimony. I want you to notice several things in this picture. First, there are a multitude of cameras pointed at Zuckerberg. Due to copyright law, it's not possible to use a single camera feed for all networks. Consequently, what you see in front of uh, Zuckerberg are multiple video and still cameras provided by multiple sources. Those cameras are largely pointed at him from the front, but there are also cameras at the left and the right, the balcony on the left, and the sub-balcony below it on the left. There's even a window open beneath the Senate seal with a camera trained on Zuckerberg. There is a lot of theatrical lighting. The room is extremely bright, lit from both the front and the back, though the back lighting is less visible than this picture. The lights at the front are quite brilliant, of the kind I'm intimately familiar with as someone who was once a stagehand. I hung many such lights, and if you look carefully on the left and the right of the rafters, you can see the crawl spaces necessary to both hang and adjust the studio lights. The rear lights aren't really visible, but you can tell that they exist. In the first place, all of the senators are perfectly lit. You can see their faces clearly. There isn't a single shadow cast across any of them. That doesn't happen by accident. In the second place, you can see perfectly the backs of both Zuckerberg and the people behind him. You can even see the reflection of the rear lighting. It's to the left of the Senate seal. It looks like a pattern of bright circles. There are also two large lamps to the left and the right of the textured backdrop in the darkness at the rear of the picture. Um, they're in, in the same wall where the seal is placed on the sides. There are a pair of large lights on tripods that are largely hidden by the shadows because they aren't currently in use. 
More evidence of theatricality can be found on the marks on the floor. Note the blue tape marks at the bottom of the picture and to the right of Zuckerberg's desk. These are, are the traditional marks to show where actors should stand for particular shots. And there are other lines, particularly the yellow rectangles, which are used to help position various cameras. You can't see much of it, but there is a sound system to ensure that all sounds from either senators or witnesses can be heard throughout the room. There are a series of speakers, and all of these are controlled in real time by a soundboard operator who compensates for the audio level of the speaker. This is all very literally theatrical. It is theater right down to the makeup. And yes, that's right. The principals are wearing makeup. Every single senator sat in front of a makeup chair for at least half an hour, and it was an absolute requirement. You see, with that amount of bright lighting, without makeup, your face looks flat, washed out, and pale for the cameras. In order to appear human, you must use makeup. There's also the fact that not a single strand of hair is ever out of place on those people. This is indicative of a very, very strong hairspray. I'd be willing to bet that there is a uh, congressional and senatorial makeup department stocked with makeup personnel who work on all of these schmucks when they're headed into this kind of theater. And it's almost a certainty that the witnesses wear makeup as well. Without it, they'd suffer from the same flat, washed out, and pale effect that you would see on TV. Now, if you want real fun here, here is an example of what happens that you never see. This is what happens before and after testimony from someone noteworthy. In this case, it was Mark Zuckerberg. They are besieged on all sides by an orgy of press scumbags, all shoving each other up out of the way for the best shot. The press are scumbags. Yet you're supposed to act as a witness, cool, calm, and collected, as if none of the cameras were rolling. And that's right, every single one of them is outright acting, whether it be a congressman, senator, or witness. They are all keenly aware of the nature of this theatricality. Congressmen and senators play to it without even looking to the cameras or other. <laughs> of course they do that. They're acting, they're pretending to be government officials acting on behalf of their constituents. Witnesses are also acting as well. They're playing witnesses who never look at the camera, which is an extremely unnatural thing for a person to do. I, I know this because having been an actor a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away and being trained to not look at the camera, it took me several months to become comfortable with looking at the camera for this show. The witnesses have all been coached. They never look at the cameras, neither the ones sitting in front of them during the hearing nor the orgy of them here before and after their testimony. This is all literally theater. Now add to it the endless hours of hearsay and telepathy, and you have a perfect recipe for nothing substantive coming out of the hearing and endless boredom. At the end of the day, with all the theatrical, theatrics aside, the Democrats, ha Democrats have nothing. The only pertinent information that came out was the Ukrainian government is on record of there having been no quid pro quo of which they were aware. Quid pro quo means that you say, hey, if you do this for me, I will do that for you. If either side says that they were unaware of the deal, then you have no quid pro quo. You can say that the president knew, but the Ukrainians said they didn't. No quid pro quo. Done. The president also explicitly told Ambassador Sondland, quote, I want nothing. I want no quid pro quo. I want Zelensky to do the right thing, end quote. The Democrats have nothing and no amount of soliloquizing, which is another thing, a kind of theatrics that the congressmen all do for the cameras, will ever change that fact. The Democrats have nothing. One last thing that is a bit of housekeeping. My Twitter account was permanently suspended for unspecified reasons. I now have a new account at SYL Tales. If you've been following my prior account, it asks that you now follow my new one. I promise that I will follow back anybody who follows me.
And so the new account is at SYL Tales, and I have a link for that in my description box. And that is all that I have to say about that. I would love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. So, thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYO Ranch, the Bitchu channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.